I'm so happy that you joined us today. Today, you're going to learn a lot about what I saw in heaven about angels. You're going to learn how to partner with angels and how to live victoriously with their help, not just for yourselves, but for your loved ones too. Welcome to Nuggets of Gold. My name is Donna Rigney. Every time we meet, I'm going to share with you a nugget, a golden nugget of revelation, a golden nugget of something from the heart of God. These are revelations from the heart of God. When I'm in my prayer room, when I'm alone with the Lord, He frequently brings me in the Spirit to heaven or to other places in the spirit. And when he takes me there, he often teaches me things that he then tells me, I want you to share these nuggets of gold, these revelations, these encounters that we've had with my children so they can partake of the nourishment that's in these nuggets. They can partake of my love and they can know far better who I am so they'll fall more in love with me. So this particular day, I was in the spirit, uh, in my prayer room, just alone with the Lord, with my worship music. I, I wear my uh, little iPhones with my iPad and just listening to the music and worshiping the Lord. And all of a sudden, Jesus appeared to me. And he came to me in the spirit on his white horse. I quickly joined him. I got on the back of the white horse. And as we were driving, as we were riding along on the white horse, I saw that Jesus was all in white and I was all in white on this horse. And we were literally, it felt like we were floating on a cloud. It wasn't bumpy riding. And we came to this beautiful mountain, which I've come to know as the mountain of glory in heaven. And we went up the mountain of glory, past this, uh, on the side of the mountain, on the, my right hand side, is a beautiful, beautiful garden. We went past the garden, high, high and up the mountain. And the Lord said to me, I'm going to take you someplace today that I've not taken to you before. You've not seen this place in the past. I have seen the garden of glory. I have seen part of the mountain, but I never went past this height in the mountain where the garden is. But on this particular day, the Lord took me on his horse past the, the garden, high, high into the mountain. And as we went up the mountain, I began to see angels, huge, huge battalions of angels all lined up and they were lined up in rank. And I, I really have learned from my previous visits to heaven that I've got to open my spiritual eyes in order to see all that the Lord wants to show me. I've seen in the past where I've gone to a particular place and seen what I saw. And then when I go back, I see things clearer. I see things that I didn't notice before. And the Lord has explained to me, it's my level of faith that he can show me what my level of faith allows him to show me. I'm giving you that as a little nugget for you. Let your faith arise when you're with the Lord and when you're in his presence, that you believe that he's going to show you wonderful things and open your spiritual eyes, just like Jeremiah had to when the Lord appeared to Jeremiah. He said to him, what do you see? And Jeremiah looked and explained what he saw, but he had to look. He had to open his spiritual eyes and look. And this is what the Lord has taught me. Open your spiritual eyes with faith, expecting then I'm going to show you things. So I've learned to look around when I'm on my visitations and to take in as much as I can so that when I get back into the natural realm, I can recall what I saw and I can share more precisely the things and the details. So I was looking with those big wide eyes of faith opened and I just 
kept looking at the angels and I saw uh, some angels were dressed uh, like militant. Uh, they had a gold sash around their waist and they had a long sword beside on their side and they were big and they were tall, enormous. And these angels had wings. There were other angels that weren't as tall, weren't as big, but they were dressed uh, a, a, a little dip, bit different. They had a gold band around their head and they were dressed in white garments, but a little bit snugger. And so as we went up the hill, up the mountain, I saw more and more and more battalions of angels. And as we rode, the Lord said to me, I want you to command my angels now. I want you to command my angels. He said, I'm giving you governmental authority to tell my angels what I want them to do. And that was the key, what Jesus wanted them to do. So I began saying, in the name of Jesus, angels go forth, heal the sick, bring body parts from that body pot room in heaven, bring them to people that need body parts. I began telling angels, angels, bring truth to people that are believing lies. Take truth from heaven and bring it now to people that are being deceived. Angels, go forth now and set the captives free. I began telling the angels, those that are caught and trapped in bondages of addiction, that are trapped in the grip of sin, angels, go and set the captives free. I did this as many things I could think of. I began commanding the angels to go and do those things, to perform those things that I knew God wanted us to receive here on the earth. He was giving me a key how we could live more victoriously, how we can partner with the angels. And then he showed me uh, the key, why I was dressed in white, why he was dressed in white, uh, the significance. Everything in these visitations I've learned is significant. And God is speaking even through the colors. Uh, through the things that are going on, God is speaking through these different things. And so I began to, to listen to the, to the Lord and hear what he was showing me, that the reason that I was dressed in white and I was sitting behind him, I had my arms around him, my head resting on his shoulder. He said, this is what I'm giving you a key, how my children can partner with the angels. This is how you partner with the angels, he said. You stay close to me. Stay in intimate fellowship with me. That was me sitting behind him on the horse, holding on tight with my head resting on his shoulder. He said, stay in intimate fellowship with me. That's one of the keys that we need to have in order to be able to command the angels, to call the angels forth from heaven, to go and work on behalf of the Lord and behalf of us. And the other thing he showed me was I was dressed in white. I had a white garment on and that this white garment represented purity. He said, come before me with pure hearts and pure hands. Have a pure heart. And how can we have a pure heart? Love has to be uh, the ingredient that fills our heart. We need to have love for God first and foremost love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself. As we love others, that keeps our heart pure. That's, that, then we're able to command the angels. If we try to command the angels from a stance of impurity or anger, resentment, bitterness, even revenge, we won't be effective at all. We have to have a pure heart. And so he was showing me, be intimate with me, spend time with me, be in close fellowship with me, keep your heart pure. And the last thing, which was very important, is to work with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you in what you declare and what you decree. I wasn't declaring things uh, that I wanted. I wasn't saying, angels, go get me a new car. Angels, go clean my house, <laughs> which maybe I might have thought of. <laughs> but I knew that I had to listen to the Holy Spirit inside me, 
give me the prayer strategies that God wanted to perform, that he wanted his angels to perform, because the angels perform the word of God. They perform the will of God. They're not here for my beck and call to do my bidding. They're here to do the bidding of the Lord God Almighty. And so as the Lord prompts us and shows us, this is what I want to do. I want my children set free. We can command those angels, come forth and set the captives free. Donna Rigney and her husband Jack have been married for over 53 years and together have raised 23 children, three biological, four adopted, and 16 foster children. Donna is an author, prophetess, and pastor, but is an evangelist at heart. She has brought teams to minister the gospel in prisons, nursing homes, and for over 15 years, she and her husband hold services at a youth detention facility for teenage boys, with thousands receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior, set free and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Donna and Jack also host two weekly services and prayer meetings, where their goal is to help others enter into a deep, intimate relationship with the Lord, to fall in love with Father God, and live filled with the Holy Spirit and unhindered by demonic strongholds. Donna's messages are both timely and prophetic, and she is known for her passion for intimacy with the Holy Spirit. For more tools and information, contact Donna Rigney Ministries. As frequently happens to me when I've had a visitation with the Lord, wherever he's taken me one day, when he's not quite finished with the revelation or the truth that he's trying to show me, he comes and appears to me and brings me back there. And this is what happened the next day. Back into my prayer room, Jesus appeared with his white horse the next day. And I was so excited because now I knew where, where we were going. I knew we were going to the mountain of glory and probably to see the angels again. And sure enough, I got on the back of the horse and we went like, it was just like riding on a cloud up the mountain. But this time the Lord brought me even higher past the armies of angels that I had already seen higher in up onto the mountain. And I saw more angels, multitudes, multitudes and multitudes of angels, and they were just standing ready. I can only describe this like an army that's all ready. They're dressed, they have their gear on, and they're ready for their marching orders. They're standing at attention, and they're waiting for their commander to tell them what to do. They were all in line. And that's what it, exactly what it looked like in heaven. It looked like the angels were standing ready to get their orders. They're ready. The battle's raging here on the earth. Angels know it. And they're ready to come at the Lord's bidding and the bidding of his saints to come and rescue his people. So I was watching this and in awe of it. And I began to wonder why of all the places in heaven were the angels gathered on the mountain of glory. Now the mountain of glory is a place in heaven that has like a super abundance of the glory of God. It's like, the, like it's concentrated, if that's how I can explain it, that the glory is, of God is all over heaven. The glory of God is the atmosphere of heaven. But this mountain has a, just a concentration of the glory that is above where any place else in heaven. And so these angels were there gathered on the mountain of glory. And I wondered, why are they here and not some other place in heaven where the contingents of angels would be gathered waiting for their orders to be sent forth where the armies of, of God's angels would, would be waiting for the commander in chief to give his orders. And the Lord began to explain to me when I asked him, I said, why are they here? I didn't even just think it. I said it to him. I said, why? And, and I just want to encourage you, when you have encounters with the Lord, don't be afraid to ask him questions. He'll answer you. He will tell you what you need to know. And so I asked him, I said, why are the angels here and not some other place in heaven? And he told me, he said, the, as the angels gather on the mountain of glory, they are absorbing my glory. 
But more and more and more of my glory is filling my angels. And he said, demons cannot stand the glory. So he said, when I release the angels to the earth to battle the forces of darkness, the angels have so much power, so much of my glory, demons cannot stand it. Demons flee in the presence of my glory. And he said, you know, on the earth, many times when my angels have appeared to different people, the glory that's on my angels is so strong that they fall out. The people fall out. They can't stand up. We've seen that with Daniel. We've seen that with Ezekiel. Many people had encounters with angels, and as they did, they fell on their face. And the angels would say, get up. The angels would help them up. And the Lord explained to me the reason that happened was because people get undone in the glory. It's hard for us when the glory of God is so intense to even stand up under the glory, under the weight of the glory. I've had that happen to me where the glory has been so incredibly strong. I've had a difficult time getting up and moving. A one Sunday night, we have a, a prayer meeting every Sunday night at our home. And after we pray, we have worship and we have a, a, the message. And then we get into prayer. Just before we get into prayer, we take communion together. And when we were taking communion, the glory of God fell on me in a very strong, intense way, similar to what I'm describing. And the Lord put it on my heart to pray for a woman that was part of our prayer group that's been suffering. And I had a difficult time getting myself out of my seat just to walk a few steps over to where this woman was so I could pray with her because I knew what the Lord was showing me was in that glory, demons flee. Sickness has to go. Infirmities have got to leave people. Cancers got to go. And I knew the glory was that intense that night, more so than I've encountered ever in my life. That one specific moment. Many times I've encountered the glory, but the intensity of it has changed from time to time. And so as I, I was able to, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I said, Holy Spirit, you've got to help me to get up out of this seat and to go over and minister to this woman. And I did. I went over and ministered to her. She's feeling wonderful. But then I thought, I'm up moving. Let me go pray for anybody else. So I went around the room to everybody else that was attending the prayer meeting and prayed for them, prayed over each one of them. And when they came back the following week, reports of pain gone, they're feeling so much better. Uh, one woman wanted her hair thickened and her hair grew thicker. Uh, she, people were telling her how thick her hair was. She was so happy with that. This uh, God cares about every single thing. And when the glory is on us, wonderful miracles, wonderful things can happen because his glory is his presence. It's him. It's God coming. And I told you before, God comes in ways where it's wonderful. It's like a big kiss. He told me, he said, my, when my glory comes, it's like I am giving my children a big kiss, a big kiss. So getting back to my visitation with the angels, uh, the Lord reminded me to get close to him. He said, I want all my children to command my angels, to partner with my angels. My angels are here waiting for orders to go help your loved ones, to help your family, your friends, your nation, to help the world. These angels are powerful and mighty, and that power resides in the glory that's on these angels, that they bring that glory from heaven to the earth as we partner with the angels as we stay in intimate fellowship with the Lord. And that's probably one of our challenges is to stay in that place of seeking him, spending time with him, getting apart with him on a daily basis, making him preeminent in our lives and keeping pure, keeping our hearts pure. We live in a world where we hear so many negative things. If you watch the news, it's hard to keep your heart pure. You become angry just watching the news. It's hard not to hate people 
that are causing such injustice. But if we want to have authority, the authority that we need, that governmental authority that the Lord was speaking to me about, he said, I've given you governmental authority. He said, the way that you have this is by partnering with me, spending time with me, being led by my Holy Spirit, and keeping your heart pure, keeping an attitude of love and forgiveness, remembering that you are not battling against flesh and blood. You are battling against powers and principalities. It's not your brother. It's not your sister. It's not this gentleman on the news. It's not that politician. It's the evil, wicked spirits that are controlling them and trying to use them to destroy people's lives. If we've got to remember that, and that's the key to keeping our heart pure. For me to keep my heart pure, I've got to remember this person isn't really in control of what they're doing. This person is being controlled by a spirit. This person needs my help to get set free so this person can be controlled by God and be used to bring blessings and not curses to the world. Donna Rigney had multiple heavenly visitations where she toured heaven and encountered the glory of God. In Donna's powerful book, she shares with you her vivid, detailed accounts of heaven. As you read The Glory of God Revealed, you will be amazed at the wonderful things she saw and learned, and you're too going to encounter the glory of God. Through her book, you will learn how you can access the glory in your life, understand what the glory truly is, learn that you cannot separate the glory from God or from who God is. Find out how the days ahead will be marked by God's glory. Discover how miracles, signs, and wonders will become commonplace in the glory. Understand how to enter into glory encounters with God every day. Don't miss out on getting Donna Rigney's anointed book, The Glory of God Revealed. Go to DonnaRigney.org today and find this book and many more. God's angels are a wonderful gift from Him to us. His angels are used in many, many ways. As we go through scripture, we can see many times that God sent His angels from heaven to the earth. We know the story of Mary and Joseph, how God chose them to bring the Messiah to the world. We know that, how angels appeared the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and spoke to Mary, how an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. And even after they had Jesus, how an angel appeared in a dream and it guided Joseph to safety. That's, we, most of us know that story. We also know that once Jesus was born in Bethlehem, how a, a whole army of angels appeared on the hillside and worshiped and praised God. They came from heaven to the earth. And what did they bring? The glory, the glory that's in that beautiful, beautiful mountain of glory, the glory of God, the presence of God. They brought that to the earth. We also know of a story in scripture where King Hezekiah who was a wonderful, wonderful king who loved God sincerely with a pure heart. And there were an army, a vast army that was arrayed against him. And he prayed to God. He cried out to God. And when he did, God sent one angel, just one angel. Scripture tells us one angel was sent and destroyed, defeated the entire army that was arrayed against Hezekiah. Are God's angels powerful? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They are, you, they are enormously powerful. And the reason they're so powerful, as I just shared, was because they are soaking in the glory. They are filled with the glory of God, the power, the majesty, the might, the wonder, the splendor, the presence of God is on his angels. And when they come to the earth, they bring that glory with them. And, with, and in that glory, not, it isn't just that people fall out in the spirit. Demons are destroyed. All those demons that were arrayed through that army to destroy Israel when Hezekiah was the king, 
Every one of them was destroyed. We've seen how Daniel was seeking an answer to prayer. He prayed, he fasted for 21 days and an angel appeared to him and told him, from the minute you started praying, Father heard you and sent me with the answer. But I was resisted by the prince of Persia, a demon that ruled over the land, stopped this angel. So another angel was sent to help him and when that angel came, the two of them fought and they got free and were able to then release this angel to come with the message to Daniel that he was waiting to hear. He had received a visitation and he needed an understanding of what this vision and this visitation was. What was God speaking to him through that? And this angel was sent, met a lot of warfare on the way. But God's angels are mightier than the powers of darkness. And this is what we have to remember. God wants us to partner with his angels. He wants us to have his power, have his glory, not be under the thumb of the enemy, but to rise up above our circumstances and rise up above all the wickedness and the evil that the enemy tries to bring against us. God has He's already defeated the enemy. When Jesus rose from the dead, huh? the enemy was defeated. He went and he ripped the key to the earth out of Satan's hand. And now he says, now all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. I reign, I rule. The earth is mine and the fullness thereof. I won the earth back. The enemy tried to come and take it from my father. I got it back. But what do we have to do? We have to implement that victory. We're like the policeman that implements the law. We have to implement the victory that Jesus purchased for every one of us, for the whole world. And we do it through partnering with his angels, getting in communion with the Holy Spirit, keeping our hearts pure, and being in fellowship with Jesus. I'm gonna pray for you right now that God will help you to partner with the angels. I'm gonna pray for God to help you to pick up that rod of authority he's given you. He said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go, use my authority, use my name, and you command the forces of darkness to let your families go and you command my angels to come forth from heaven. Father, I pray for all my brothers and sisters to get a wonderful revelation and understanding of the power and the glory that resides on your angels, that you want your angels working beside us on the earth, helping us to be victorious, like Hezekiah was victorious, like Daniel was victorious, like Joseph and Mary were victorious. You want us to be victorious. I pray that every single one gets intimate with you, stays in the place of fellowshipping with you, has a pure heart and great faith in this hour.